pick guard is so high. It's like, yeah, I know. And the best part, it's bolted right to the front of the guitar. It's like glued. It's like it's screwed in, and it's elevated, so it's uh, you know you can see underneath it. It's, yeah. Oh, so you can just drop your pick. Yeah, drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's one so cool. Actually, Brian did an X set on it years ago, and it's been and you could totally see like the is that overspray on? Oh the... yeah, it's just spray painted. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. They just take a, a, a stencil and just lay it on the headstock and spray it. How much are these now? Okay, so I'm back here at Dojo Guitar Repair with my good friend Dave Honorado. Dave Honorado. I came back down here today though because I want to make a video with Dave taking you through some essential setup and guitar maintenance tips that all guitar players need to know and need to be doing on a pretty regular basis. And selfishly, I wanted to make this video because I'm terrible with the nuts and bolts of actually keeping a guitar in good playable shape. I tour a lot, I travel with my guitars a lot, and I never do anything other than change the strings and occasionally maybe clean the fretboard. So. Today, Dave is gonna take us through some essential guitar maintenance and care tips and tricks. Okay, first off, um, we'll start with acoustics stuff um, to look for. Um, just, you know, say you get off the road or you get done doing some gigs and you're like, you start noticing maybe the action's getting a little high or you're getting some buzzing that you haven't had because of either weather, the neck's moving, whatever. First thing I always like to do is to see how the bridge and the neck angle are on an acoustic. You'll get the bridge that will move a lot. The top will actually buckle up. You can kind of see like on this guitar, it's actually got a little bit of a hump in it. And that's from the humidity in the air and the tension on the guitar it pulls the top up. So when that happens, the string gets higher or it can get lower depending on how it's being affected. So first of all, I just like to go sight down the neck and usually a lot of people, um, I always get this question by hundreds of guitar players that come in here like, I don't know what I'm looking at when I look at a neck to see if it's straight or not. And simply what I do is you just kind of close one eye and just follow the line of the neck down the body of, to the guitar. And if you close one eye, you can actually see where, how the neck is in the fretboard in here. So if you see something that's going like this with a massive bow in it, that means you gotta tighten the truss rod. Sometimes you have to take the neck off like on some Fender guitar, solid bodies, but we're just dealing with acoustics right now. Most of the time they're usually here or up in the sound hall. But what I like to do is see, you know, how much bow's in the neck and see how much distance is, is from this saddle here to like where the 12th fret is, and then from the 12th fret to here, to where the nut is. So, cause it's an equal distance between the two. Like on this guitar, this guitar has a pretty decent sized bow in it. So now I know that that means that you gotta tighten the truss rod. Uh, if you lose sight down your neck and it's back bowed and it's getting like you're buzzing out up in here in the middle of the neck or up in here, you're getting a lot of buzz. You wanna back off the truss rod because that means it's too tight. So. How, how much should people be adjusting their truss rods at a time? It kind of depends on the guitar, but I usually tell people um, an eighth of a turn either way to see how much play is in the, in the truss rod. Like if you get into a guitar that has a back bow in it and you go to adjust the truss rod and you realize that the truss rod is already loose, you have a major problem with your guitar. So you can't adjust that out. Uh, same as if you have a heavy bow in the neck and you go to adjust the truss rod and it's really tight and you can't tighten it anymore, you have another problem with the guitar. So outside of those two instances, you should be able to get at least an eighth of a turn, a quarter of a turn without too much problem. And every time you do it, just sight the neck and see if how much it's being affected. Second thing I like to do, and it's, it's a big one that most people overlook, when you're taking off your strings and you're kind of cleaning your guitar, make sure to go and check to see how tight your tuners are. Now these unfortunately are non-adjustable tuners, but like on a you know normal guitar here like this, you know like a set of Grovers, um, you've got a couple of points of, of action where you can actually uh, adjust the tuner. So you've got these screws here on the buttons that you can tighten up, so I always check those. So if you're having tuning problems or you seem to have strings that are loosening up and slipping, see how loose these are and tighten them. If they're loose, tighten them until they, they're, they're nice and snug. The other thing is also on these gears where you have a threaded bushing, a lot of times these threaded bushings will loosen up. Simply take the string off and just take a, a socket and tighten that down and make sure it's tight because at all of these points, if any of these are loose, it's a possible 
area where the string and the tuner are actually moving and you're getting tuning issues. So that's an easy one, you know, and I, I can't tell you how many guitars I get in here. Guys go, I can't keep my guitar tuned. I don't know what's going on. And it's just simply loose tuners, you know, so that's All right. It. So for the next tip, this is something I screw up all the time and it's adjusting the intonation. This is something that as guitar players, we should be doing regularly and know how to do. So Dave, what is intonation and how do we fix it when it's out? Um, what you want to do, you can use, I would suggest using a, a good floor tuner or a good rack tuner. If you got a rack tuner, it's just either one. I would su not, not suggest um, using a headstock tuner because they're not quite as finite as the floor tuners or a rack tuner is. So, uh, and with the intonation, you want to be as close as you possibly can. And the thing about a guitar that you have to remember is that you will never get a guitar to be perfectly in tune. Typically, even the best guitars, tempered tuning, all of that, you can get them extremely close, but they are a stringed instrument and they always will be out just slightly. And it's just sort of the, the thing that you can't get around. So we have to find the happy medium basically. There's a few ways you want to do this. I would suggest not laying the guitar down like this and, and checking your intonation because if you do this you can actually pull it out of tune by pressing simply on the neck and watching it move on a tuner. So put it in playing position. You know, sit, do it this way because this is the way you're pretty much going to play it all the time. And are you fretting on the 12th fret? Or are you? What I do harmonic? first is just hit the, hit the harmonic to see where it's on the tuner. So with that one's showing, it's basically, this is the low E I'm hitting. It's basically in tune right there. So then what I do is just simply, as light as I can, I try not to over push on the, on the string, but just right in the middle, hit it. And you can see this one's just a tad flat. So if you're, say your string is sharp on your tuner, you actually want to move the saddle, the saddle here, take a screwdriver, you actually want to move it back this way. So if it's sharp at the 12th fret when you fret it, you want to go back, and that means tightening this to where you, you tighten it, and the, the saddle actually goes this way. If it's sharp, you want to go, or I'm sorry, flat, you want to go toward the neck. So the good thing about these type bridges is that you have plenty of room to adjust. Now sometimes you'll get a, a bridge like something like this, like a wraparound tailpiece, where you don't have any adjustment as far as the actual saddle because it's obviously you can see it's notched here the only way you can do this that on this bridge is actually take a allen wrench and tighten these loosen these and it will actually angle the bridge either way on, on the treble side or the base side and i check the height of the nut too because you know after a while these the slots will get worn out sometimes they'll get a little too low and they start to buzz um, but I like to check the, the nut height and the way the easiest way to do it is just take your index finger run across the third position here and just take your index finger and see how much play you have between the first the fret here and, and the actual nut you can kind of see how the strings move in there a little bit this nut is cut fine um, but if you do this and you notice that the nut is is kind of high you're gonna have a lot of play in it so like this one you can see like i'm pushing down on the fourth string here and there's got some play between where i'm capoing it with my finger and where i'm pushing on it i typically like to have the strings as low as i can cut the slots cut as low so there's not a lot of height in that and what that'll do it, it actually it will mess with your tuning uh, and then also it will feel different like the if the nuts higher you're going to feel the action is going to feel higher even though you have it low at the bridge it's still going to feel high up in here and that's something that's fairly easy to do too um, all right so that leads perfectly into my next question and that is what are some common tools and things that every guitar player should maybe not carry with them to a gig but have at home to keep their guitars in tip-top shape well, I look at it like, you know, it's like anything. Uh, I, your tools are everything. <laughs> so first I like to use radius gauges, which the radius gauge is basically just um, a set of these gauges that you can get from a bunch of different suppliers. And they're different radiuses for each one. I've got everything from a seven and a quarter, which is a normal fender, all the way up to a 20, which is a, like a flat classical. 
Um, now, obviously, you wouldn't need to bring all these to a gig, but if you find out what your radius is on your particular guitar or, or ones that you use a lot of, you know, just buy three or four of these. They're fairly inexpensive, and the greatest thing about these is if you don't know how to set action on a guitar, this is basically kind of a dummy way, idiot-proof way of doing it. So, like, this telly I got I know is like a compound radius, but it'll flatten out at like a... 16 so I just go and look at the 16 radius gauge here and they're all numbered so it's easy to figure out and you basically just slide these under the string this is my guitar by the way so if I hit it I don't care <laughs> um, and what you do with this is you just take the radius gauge and pull the radius gauge up under the strings and you can see w you, what you do is you just set your bridge saddles to the arch of this radius gauge so if you know if you get a bridge that's all wonky and you get ones that are lower or, or really inconsistent a lot of times it's usually the saddles have just been messed with and they're not anywhere near the, the right radius so all you do is you take this radius gauge if you just want to check it even and over time you know on on a fender bridge from playing it and hitting your hand on it sweat um bending strings you know these can fall and collapse and the, the allen wrench uh, screws can can loosen and change and that'll mess with your radius so the easiest way to check it is just take one of these pull it up and you can see if there's ones with gaps in it or if not if they're perfectly across like this i know the radius is okay the other thing i would suggest getting is a basically like a feeler gauge um for a guitar and this is just to check the action height so um you can get these at stumac also uh, and I'm not being paid by Stu Mac, by the way, to say that. <laughs> um, but if they want to send me a check, that's fine. <laughs> I'll take, the, I'll take the, the gauge here and actually just measure at the 12th fret the height of the strings. And what I end up doing personally for myself is I'll, I'll check it and I'll go like two or three gigs and I'll make a mental note or I'll just write it down what, what it was the last time I checked it to see if the neck's moving at all. So I would just suggest buying a set of metric and imperial uh, allen wrench so you can cover the bases between american and non-american guitars the ever trusty <laughs> string winder string winder that you can't get around you have to have one of these um another one that i love is the um is this snaps 2.0 uh bridge pin puller and the guys at big rocker are, are are good guys and they make a lot of cool stuff and it's real simple to use and it's just it saves so much time and it saves a lot of bridge uh, damage and all this is simply like so okay so you got your normal bridge pin here and you want to like change the string well you use this little snaps tool and you basically just go right over this pit the bridge pin and push this collar down like this and just pull up on it and just rock it back and forth pulls it right out you know you'll never have to see this ever again where somebody's doing this and ruining a bridge or the pins oh or whatever God. yeah i see do it people all the, actually do that i've never I seen that before see it all the time string yeah, i've always just used this thing on the string line that little thing in there and what happens is i get under there and it's yes like well that's the thing that's why the snaps i've never i've had one of these for a while and it's never screwed a pin up never screwed the bridge up uh, lifesaver so uh, we should point out they're not sponsoring this video at all no this is just no actually it's, it's not I, I, this is I use these tools there's nothing in any of this that I get paid for that I've been given whatever I buy all this stuff I use it and if it works great then I, I support it if it doesn't I'll tell you <laughs> I, have, I have no qualms well, apparently okay. it works because you got the t-shirt on well I, <laughs> yeah well the other thing I would suggest and this is really easy to, to make or use if you want okay say you, you take your strings off your your acoustic and you've got all these loose and the strings are flying all over the place and you don't want them to get caught up in each other just take two strips of velcro okay this is really easy to do just slide one under the string and then take another the over other piece here and do this Whoa. and your strings don't go anywhere and they stay put so you can you know literally i can take all of these strings off have them flopping all over the place and they you know they don't come off the tuner and vice versa if you take them off here use it right here you know and and so either way it'll work and it's real simple you know, simple easy little hack to use i mean they're they're you know you got to think smart with that kind of stuff That's and I, cool yeah and so when the strings are loose there i can actually pull the strings off have them over here work on the nut put the strings back on and they don't get caught up in each other so Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is setting your pickup height, adjusting your pickups to get the right balance of tone without 
sacrificing something, yeah. right? Sure. First, uh, I get a lot of guys in with um, humbuckers that tend to collapse inside to the the ring, like they actually fall in down in the guitar. And what happens is this spring or this screw will loosen up, and they're just hanging in there. So what I like to do with this, and it's real easy to do, and I've done this on all my guitars with humbuckers, where you've got a screw sticking out here. I just like to get like a little tiny nut like this, put the nut over it so it'll never collapse. You just tighten it against that, and you can, you know, this will never fall through and never you'll never lose the spring or the screw, and it fits right down in there. Sometimes, depending on the guitar, you might have to do a slight bit of routing which it, I, usually you don't because the way these most Gibsons and, and Gibson style guitars have these cuts for the for the legs here, um, you know, and it fits right down in it. So that's an easy, like literally five cent fixer, you know, fixer upper for a, for this problem. So how do you how do you dial in your pickup height though? First of all, just plug the guitar in and go through each string and see that see how the definition is between a harmonic and an open string. Uh, play it all the way, you know, just go up the neck each note and see which notes tend to be popping out more than others. And as you're doing that, uh, just adjust the pole and see if you can find, you know, get a nice medium uh, with each one. On a humbucker, it's the same principle as the P90. What I like to do is always, you know, if you're going to be adjusting this stuff, don't, <laughs> don't adjust it like this. <laughs> So where you can slip and hit the top of the guitar, always put the guitar flat and guide this. I like to guide the, the actual screwdriver with my finger like this. So if it does slip off, it doesn't hit the top of the guitar and simply adjust this up and down. You can see where how the pickup is moving up and down here. Um, what I like to do is set the, the humbucker where the string height is. I like to keep the, the, the humbucker depending on how powerful it is and what kind of magnets they are. But if they're normal like PAF style pickups in the eight to nine K range, um, I usually like to have maybe, oh, I don't know, probably oh, maybe like a like an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch from the top of the, the, the cover to where the string is. So again, use your ear though, because all pickups are different. They're all rated different. They all sound different and, and they sound different in different positions. So use your ear find you know find what sounds good to you or best to you and don't you know don't be wigged out about the visual like say you know if you've got a couple of pole pieces that are really lower than the others but it sounds great leave it okay well, i remember this guitar this is i haven't seen this thing in years oh, this is the best feature of this guitar right here Are you ready for this oh with the pit oh my look God. at this yeah you got a built-in yeah. Pick holder. Yeah, whatever you do, do not put this on the internet. <laughs> you're playing, you're shredding, you're up here, you're doing all these things. You're gonna die bombs. Drop your oh, pick. I dropped my pick. Fret not, because you've got your handy dandy pick dispenser right here, Dude. and you're right back to just melt in face and. Oh, I dropped my. Uh, I dropped uh, another I dropped one. Here another we go. one, man. Damn, Damn there what it are you is. Doing, man? This is my new signature guitar, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I can hear Floyd Rose all over Noah Records. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, dude. Yeah. All right. So, so those are five tricks that you need to know to keep your guitar playing and sounding great. As always, thanks to Dave for uh, helping me out with the video. Follow him on Instagram at Dojo Guitar Repair. I'll have that linked down below. And if you're in the Atlanta area and you need any kind of guitar work done, yeah. This is the dude. I also do out-of-state work, too, so people send me guitars all the time. So if yeah. you're interested in picking anything up that we talked about in the video, all the links will be in the description box down below. Those will be affiliate links. So if you buy anything through that, I'll earn a small commission, which helps me out in making these videos. Follow me on Instagram, at Rhett Scholl. Subscribe here if you haven't done so already. Click the bell to be notified when I'm going live and posting new videos. And let us know in the comments what you want to see Dave and I do next. Yeah, yeah. We're always open to ideas, you know, and we'll tell you no. <laughs> no, 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 definitely. Yeah, send them in. We're always, uh, you know, always looking for cool different stuff to mess around with. Or if you got crazy questions about stuff, whatever. Yeah. Great. Thanks, everyone, and uh, see you on the next one.